Hey, good morning, my friends. And it is a beautiful morning here in British Columbia. Summer is finally uh, doing its thing. And it's time for another Shaming Chronicle. Now, you know, I love Facebook. Um, have done ever since I started it in about 2007. And um, I love the way that it creates memories. And one of the memories came up today, which was from eight years ago. Uh, many of you know I, I was on the board of a uh, group of Christian camps and used to spend my summer going from camp to camp to camp over four or five years just speaking at them. Just cutting my teeth on stage in front of 300 kids or something like that is, uh, is great, great, great training. Anyway, I was in Grand Forks, British Columbia, uh, which I actually drove through last weekend and had a fantastic week. It was the Friday night and this 100 year storm came through and over 330 trees were uprooted and broken in, in a matter of minutes. And sadly, one of the campus did not survive that storm. That be said, every day other than that day, I was always in my cabin writing my talk for that night, except that night. I got delayed in town doing some Skype work and was uh, coming back through. In fact, the storm came over my car while I was on the road. And when I got back to the campsite and saw the desolation, I eventually managed to get up to my cabin there was a tree right through my cabin roof. And I literally do not believe I would be here today had I been sitting in that cabin. It's kind of one of those moments. And uh, even like last week, um, Debbie and I were in Banff and uh, the Jasper National Park. And you may have seen on the national news about one of those buses that rolled over one of the ice glacier buses. We were on one just a couple of days ago. I had pictures. I remember thinking, holy crap, this is a huge bus. I don't know how it happened, whether it just rolled over, whether it was a rock slide, whatever, but do you know in life when you feel like you just like missed, dodged a bullet? Yeah, me too. So this is a shaving chronicle. I have to shave. I've got a lot of work to do today. But I'd just love to spend some time with my friends and just share what I've been up to and um, what, what's been happening. And I guess one of the biggest things that happened to me while I was um, traveling last week through BC and Alberta was just how much the pandemic has affected businesses. I mean, shockingly so and you know, we, we pivoted a lot in March time when the pandemic really hit we helped many of our clients uh, I have to do it this way many of our clients change the websites change the way they think change the way they operate and literally saved a lot of businesses from going out of business and we've been working on that ever since you know, kitchen cabinet companies but delis uh, hotels dentists um, speakers many people i've helped get through the pandemic but it's not just a case of just getting through it it's a case of getting over it and the trouble is we ain't over it we are nowhere near over it i heard a friend the other day that he doesn't think that he'll be speaking on stage at any live events now till at least summer of 2021 that's a year from now can you imagine being the way we are today a year from now possible hey you guys it's good to see you so that's kind of what made me think a lot about um the way i do my work i mean most of my work is done virtually anyway so it hasn't really made a big difference for us in that respect but a lot of my clients have bricks and mortar businesses oh god oh feels good to get all this scruffy stuff off my face a lot of my clients have bricks and mortar businesses and they're struggling and the very aspect of networking and going to live events and trade shows, BNIs, all that kind of stuff, they're not really happening. So what do you do? Um, you gotta learn to do things differently. You gotta learn to learn things better and you gotta learn to learn things in an online virtual world. I mean, just like the Shaving Chronicle I've been running for like three years now. Who'd have thunk? shaving would have become a thing on Facebook Live video. But it has. I get a lot of people. There's a number of people watching us right now. There we go. Quick shave and conversation at the same time. So here's what I've been able to do. Um, I've decided to get all of the very best teaching that we've learned over the last few months, plus the stuff that we've been doing for years that we know works. And I've actually put it into a three-day live workshop. And even though it's the summer, I don't know what the summer looks like for you, but for a lot of people, it's the same as the spring. So I've decided, I've never done it before, I'm gonna deliver a three-day live workshop, August 4, 5, 6. And, you know, I was gonna do it for free, but I figured, you know what? Quite often, people who don't pay, don't pay attention. So I'm charging a nominal fee. I'm just charging 97 bucks. 
And $50 of that, I'm gonna give straight back to the food bank here in uh, Canada for every single ticket. And 47 bucks just covers my overhead and the, uh, the work that we're doing towards it. And I wanna help as many people as possible. I figured we're gonna have maybe 200 people here. I put an email out Saturday morning, blown away the amount of sales that we've already had. Just like, wow. So many people wrote back to me and said, thank you for doing this. This is so needed. I'm all in, I'm telling my friends. So would you do that? I'll put a link at the end of this video. It's called Get Known and Dare to be Digital. You know, the only way it works on social media is if you have a brand, a personal brand that people understand and recognize. And you have to consistently build that up. Just doing a few Facebook Live videos and, and expect the world to run to you, it's not gonna happen. Sometimes that strategy can be six months in the development and we see that, but it's still the right strategy, even though it takes a lot longer than sometimes we think. But those that stick with it, those that do it really well, are in fact now doing really well. It's not a time to stop marketing. It's actually time to ramp up your marketing. It's a lot of, you know, whether you're a nonprofit or a business, you, know, you have a message that the world needs to hear same principles. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to give three days of my time. It's a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, not all day. There's going to be breaks. There's going to, you know, I'll, I'll publish the whole schedule of when the breaks are so you can, you can work around it. But if you want to come join me, or you know people that could, um, it's called Get Known and Dare to be Digital. As I said, I'll put a link underneath. I felt eight years ago when I dodged that accident um, of almost like a near-death experience that I was put on this reason, planet for a reason. One of the reasons I was at that camp that week was to get them into social media. They had no online presence other than a crappy old website, to be honest. We set up social media for them. Um, on the Wednesday of the camp, there was three likes, me, the camp director, and the program director. By the Saturday after the event, they had over 650 likes on that page. Now, it's not about likes, it's about eyeballs. And that Facebook page, page became the main portal for information because power was down, the website couldn't be updated, but I could update everything from my phone. And we kept in touch with over 120 sets of parents and the news media and the emergency services. And Facebook became the lifeline of that camp, especially when it was rebuilding and fundraising. And I just felt, wow, I was meant to be here. I was meant to have set up that Facebook page. I was meant to teach them how to use social media. And for the last eight years, that's what I've been doing. I feel like I'm meant to do this. This is more than it's kind of like the Blues Brothers. You ever watch that movie? Like, I'm on a mission from God. I do believe that. I really do. I mean, sure, I make money out of what I do. Sure. We employ five full-time people, so we support five families directly through our business. But we also help, help hundreds of businesses around the world. And that's that's who I am. That's what I do. That's my mission. I know it. So I don't know who, who you are in terms of your mission or where you're at with your mission. But part of this three-day journey is to help people understand who they are, what expertise have been given, what makes them the expert in their own area and help them really establish their online authority. So it's called Get Known and Dare to be Digital. You know, many people, I, I think what the COVID virus has done is it's accelerated our evolution of business probably by five years and five months. We all knew we should be online. We all knew should we be doing a lot more online. A lot of us just avoided it because we were comfortable. We were in comfortable shoes. Well, those shoes are gone. It's time to get uncomfortable and it's time to do things differently in a, in a whole new way. And I'm, I'm there for you. I am so there for you, as my clients will tell you every single day. So thanks for watching all the way through. Appreciate another Shaving Chronicles done and in the can. I'll be sharing it across a few other platforms in a few minutes, but thank you for joining me. And if you can join me, four, five, six of August, it's live, it's not recorded. Uh, you have to show up to, to, to make it happen. I'd love to have you and it's 97 bucks. $50 of which of your donation goes straight to a food bank. So thanks for watching. Hope to see you again real soon. And if I can help you in any way or you need some more details, you know how to hit me up. Take care. Bye for now.